Hi folks, it's good to be with you. Uh, it's good to be with you today. Uh, love to everybody out there. Don't forget my website, uh, jasonburnspreacher.com, and uh, Facebook and Twitter. You can get me on. And um, we're starting a, a Evang Manchester Evangelical Fellowship. It's just a, a Bible study and a meeting on a on a Saturday, and. Um, the meeting on Saturday is at 10.30 and uh, there's a Bible study on Thursday at um, at 7.30 and there was quite a few people that was going to come tonight but uh, Brother Mike's got a headache and one or two uh, couldn't make it but uh, there are a few people that are interested in coming uh, and want to come so that's good. But the reason why I want to do this fellowship, or feel called to do this fellowship, is, is because I want to get people into the Bible. So people at Hyde Park, this will be a help to. And um, people who are not going to a church, this will be a help to. And uh, we're going to do expository Bible teaching through the books of the Bible uh, for however long I can do it uh, until the Lord calls me to something else or, or to do something else. So... So we're in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14 today. <clears throat> so you can get your Bibles. And I hope this is a blessing. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 uh, to 14. So <clears throat> let's read. So I pray before we start. Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your blessings. And Father, I pray that this study would be a blessing uh, to your people, would be a blessing to me, would be a blessing to all those. <coughs> you are interested in growing in your word. May it be a blessing to us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, excuse me, <coughs> in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the prayers of the glory of his grace through which he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace in which he hath abounded to us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the prayers of the glory uh, who first trusted in Christ, in whom also you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, who in the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the prayers of his glory. There's so much here in this passage that we're looking at. Uh, I need the help of the Holy Spirit to expound these passages, so I'm going to pray again, so forgive me. Oh God, 
I can't do this without your help. Oh God, I cannot do this without your strength. Fill me with your strength. Fill me with your power. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Anoint me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to feed your people, to encourage your people. I need your strength, Lord. I need your help. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I'm just going to get my notes here. So, Ephesians is a prison epistle. It was written by Paul in prison. Um, I just wonder if I've got uh, some notes on that. So, um, there were letters written by Paul while he was in prison. One of them is Colossians, uh, Philippians, and another one is Ephesians. And Colossians and, and Philippians are very similar in their style. Um, Ephesus was a second city was probably the second city in the Roman Empire of importance next to Rome. So it was a sea trading place. Um, in later on in the, I think in the uh, first century, coming up to the second century, Ephesus lost its, its, its power because the, the sea uh, harbour was filled up with... Um, uh, kind of pebbles and things so it, it wasn't able to conduct itself as a harbour but uh, in the time of Paul it was quite a mighty harbour and it was a powerful uh, city next to Rome uh, it had a, a massive um, a massive uh, temple uh, to a goddess there uh, the, it was the, the the temple was the four times bigger than the the the, uh, the philosophical uh, uh, temple at Athens you know the Parthian so there was a temple at Ephesus four times bigger than that and um, so Paul's in prison he writes to this very important uh, city uh, the city is mentioned uh, in Ephesians, so turn to Revelation chapter 2. So this is Bible teaching now, we're doing Bible teaching, okay? So we're getting into the Word of God. So you've got to get your Bible out. Uh, this is no hairy-fairy, I'm going to give you dreams and all this stuff. No, this is solid Bible teaching where you can grow in the Word of God, okay? So if you turn to Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, it says, Unto the angel of the church at Ephesus write these things, saith he holdeth the seven stars in the right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. And then chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, uh, 3 and 5, And has born and has patience and for my name's sake as laboured and as not fainted nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love Revelation chapter 2 uh, verse 6 and 7 but this thou hast that thou hast the deeds of Nicolaitans which I also hate he that have an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh will I give to the to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The thing about, Revel, uh, about the book of Ephesians in these verses that we're looking at from verses 1 to 14 you see the riches of God's grace, the majesty of God's grace, the lavishing of God's grace and yet, and yet we see in the book of Revelation 
already God is saying, you know, you're slipping, sorry, you're slipping. You're slipping, you know, and it wasn't long, it was only a um, hundred years later that Ephesians began to, the, sorry, uh, the Ephesian church began to falter and now uh, there's there's nothing much of the remnant of the Ephesian church if there is anything at all. So there's a warning there that that to be careful that that you know you may think you're standing but be careful you might fall. Don't be proud that you are a person of the spirit, you are a person who is walking in the things of God because you may fall because this church had powerful ministry and had a powerful uh, understanding of the word of God and yet it fell by the wayside. So let's go through the first one. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. The word Paul, if you remember, Paul was named uh, before he got converted as Saul. So why was Paul named Paul? It was because his, the word Paul means small. Okay? So he's taking on a humble name for himself. He's taking on a humble name for himself. It says an apostle. Now when he means apostle there he means that he's seen the risen Christ. That's what an apostle is. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ. The word Christ is not the name of Jesus. It is his title. It means the anointed one, the Messiah. Okay? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. So it was God that called Paul to the saints who are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So to the saints, what is a saint? We have this idea that a saint is a kind of monk, a kind of pious monk. But that's not what a saint is here. A saint means everybody who believes in Jesus Christ in their position with God is a saint. So you're a saint, I'm a saint, we're all saints if we believe in Jesus Christ. And then it says... Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. The question is, are we faithful today? Are you faithful? Am I faithful? Are you faithful? Am I faithful? What has God given you to do? Are you faithful in that? Are you faithful as a father? Are you faithful as a mother? Are you faithful as a wife? Are you faithful as a husband? Are you faithful today in the work that God has called you to do? To the, the faithful in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. You'll hear that a lot, a lot in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. And uh, if I can just get my notes. Go to verse, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. Verse 4. According as He has chosen us in Him, in Him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before Him in love. So in Him before According, he has chosen us in him. Verse 5. Having predestined us 
unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So having predestined us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ. All the blessings come in Christ. Verse 6. To the prayers of the glory of his grace through which, here it is, he made us accepted in the beloved. It's all in Christ, you see. All the blessings flow in Christ. All the blessings flow in Christ. Uh, you, you cannot be growing in your ministry. You cannot be growing in your Christian life if you do not focus on Christ. And that's, that's just the basic, in this book, Ephesians, it's mentioned 27 times in Christ. Let, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 12 to 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 12 to 13 it says for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that body being many are one body also is Christ for by one spirit were we all baptized into one body whether we be Jew or Greeks whether we be the bond or free having been all made to drink unto one spirit. So here, you're in the body when you're in Christ and the Spirit of God has come into you and made his abode in you. So when it says in Christ, it means that when we trust in the Lord Jesus and believe in him as our Lord and Saviour and then we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that we are in Christ <coughs> we're going to look at in Christ in more detail it may be in verse 3 so it says in verse 2, Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The word grace is the Gentile way of greeting, and the word peace is the Hebrew way of meeting. They both mean shalom in their own, in, in their own way. They both mean peace. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ you can see there when it says from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ that for a Jewish person to compare God and Jesus together would be blasphemy because you would only give God the glory you wouldn't give anything else the glory and yet the glory goes to God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So this peace, this salvation, this salvation comes from the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we come into this amazing few verses now which are in a way the pinnacle of the New Testament in the blessings of God. Verse 3 Blessed be the God and Father our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ that, that verse is, is just mind blowing to get our heads round but blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ so God there is Father God and he is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's God the Father 
and he is God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be honest and get scripture with scripture and it says here uh, that the Lord Je that God is blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is in reference to uh, the Father as God and Jesus as man here. There are verses that say Jesus is God, which you get in verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's showing that Jesus is God there. But here, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is showing the manhood of Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now notice here it says all, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, all, not some, not a little, not a bit, but all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Think about that. All the riches of the world, all the riches of heaven, there is more than that. There are spiritual blessings, all spiritual blessings. Beyond that, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So let's just look at a few verses here. And notice in Christ, it's all in Christ, it's all in the Lord. Let, let's look at some of these blessings that we have. Let, let's turn to 2 Peter 1 4. 2 Peter 1 4. To Peter 1 4 by which he has given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so some of the blessings that we have are the exceeding great promises and he has given us a divine nature Let's turn to Colossians 3, 4, and we could turn to so many verses. But let's some, uh, see some, uh, some, sp some of the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. Uh, Colossians 3, 4. It says, with, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye appear with him in glory. So we have life. We're given spiritual life and glory with Christ. And uh, John twenty seventeen. John uh, twenty seventeen. John uh, twenty seventeen. John 20, uh, 17. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and to your God. Um, Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I go unto my Father, and to my God, and to your God. I think the blessing there is that if the Lord goes to the Father, then we're going to be with the Father. I think that's where why I put the note there. The spiritual blessing is we're going to be with the Father. As, with the, as we are with the Lord, 
we will be with the Father. We, 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 the blessing also is that we have this intimate relationship with the Father through Christ. Um, if you can look at Matthew 28, 20. Matthew 28, 20. Matthew uh, 28, 20. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and Lord, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. The blessing there is we're given the responsibility to, to, to serve the Lord, which is incredible. Um, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. So, so the blessing there is that we're called to serve the Lord. We're given opportunity to serve in the Great Commission to make disciples. Uh, Philippians 1.29 Philippians 1.29 For unto us is given in behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also, also to suffer for his sake. So the blessing of suffering for the Lord, that's a blessing. You can look at uh, Philippians 3.10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. So Paul is saying that I may go into this suffering and know how it, Christ suffered. And for Paul that was a blessing. And then, uh, so that is a, a blessing in Christ, to suffer for Christ. Uh, Romans 8.16, Romans 8.16. Romans 8.16. It says, The Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God, verse 17, and if children then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, it be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So there's the suffering there. But notice this. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. So we, we have the divine nature. We have life. Uh, we are given the opportunity to have a relationship with the Father. We are called to serve. We are called to suffer. And we have an in inheritance in Christ. Then we have future glory, which has been mentioned in a future in a, in a number of verses. But we'll look at Romans eight, verse eighteen to twenty-one. For I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be confirmed, confirmed compared with the glory shall be revealed to us. For the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So in Christ has all these meanings. That we have life, that we have the divine nature, that we are to serve, that we are to suffer, that we have an inheritance, and that we have a future glory. All these things in Christ mean uh, mean 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 those mean in Christ. Okay. So how rich is the Word of God? We've only got to verse three, verse four. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. So God has given us these spiritual blessings, but it wasn't you who chose God. It was God who chose you. Verse 4. According he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Notice, according he has chosen us. 
in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love. So what he's saying there, before you were even born, God chose you. He had your name on his heart and he chose you. Whew, that's, that's some deep stuff, brothers and sisters. That's some really, really, really deep stuff. Really, really deep stuff. We don't like this idea of chose. Now, let's go to Isaiah 42 verse 1. 